online virtual meetings. Who, who has not yet done something like that and now really feels inspired and, and almost empowered to do it? Let us know. All right. Who, who, well, what are the reasons you haven't done it? Ignorance. With a voice Sounds like too complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. All right. Richard? My wife. Another name is complicated. <laughs> 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 I'm not even, I'm, I, I can't even imagine a way that I could respond to that that will not get me into trouble later on when I have no witnesses. Anybody just Sorry. never got around to it? You, you kind of intend it to, but it's just that keeps falling to the bottom. Johnny, all right. Shame, man. I know, there's a world shortage of these, so I've got a few. Round to it. Here's one for you. Okay. You have a round to it now, there's no excuse. Anybody else need a round to it? A limited supply, folks. One time offer only. Okay, round to it. There you go. All right, we'll be following you online. Round to it. Yes, sir. Quentin needs a round to it. One to you. There you go. Go round to it. I got, I got three more. Three more. Barbara needs a round to it. Need a round to it. Last one. Round to it. There we go. So, round to it. All right. Okay, no excuses. Now you can do almost anything in the world because you have a round to it. <laughs> if necessary, you need to lend it to your spouse or your children. You know, if they haven't got a round to do the dishes. <laughs> Are we ready? We're ready. We're ready to go. All right. So we've, we've heard from Shirley early on today. Uh, Shirley Taylor, she's going to come back. Past president of Asia Professional speakers Singapore, current president of the Global Speaks Federation. I met um, Shirley a couple of years ago when uh, I got to work on the, um, the board of uh, GSA for a little while. It was a wonderful experience. Operating at that level, connecting with other people around the world just gives you such an incredible perspective of the industry and, and what, uh, what is happening in different parts of the world. So um, we're very proud members, the Professional Speakers Association of Southern Africa, are proud members of the Global Speakers Federation, but we don't always understand what that means to us as individual members. So if you can please welcome Shirley, she will give you some insight into that. So, just put that down in case I forget what I'm going to say. Okay, good afternoon again. Um, it's been great to be here these past few days in South Africa, and a lot of people over the two days have said to me, what is the Global Speakers Federation all about? Where does PSASA fit in this in, into the Global Speakers Federation? So would you like to know a little bit more about the origins and where, where we've come from? Would you like to know that? Great. Well, I want to take you back to a town in America called Mississippi in the early 1900s. There was a young man who started out his career in many different, uh, many different careers, um, salesman, accountant, and I've forgotten some of the other things that he was. Um, but one thing that's key about this person is he was terrified of public speaking. But he did something about it, as many of us try to do, and he did some courses, so he got better at public speaking. And get better, he did. Eventually, on this, he joined Toastmasters. Anybody here a member of Toastmasters? This person joined Toastmasters, and on his second attempt, he won the World Championship of Public Speaking. Does anyone I know who I'm talking about? Uh, Douglas does. Douglas does. I know a couple of candidates, Mark Brown, maybe? No. <laughs> a little bit older, oh, this right. is Cavett yeah. Robert. <laughs> so the person that I'm talking about is Cavett Robert. Now, Cavett Robert was, like I said, he won the World Championship of Public Speaking, uh, Toastmasters, and he had a dream. Cavett had a dream that he wanted to, to create a community where we could learn, grow, and share together where speakers help speakers. And he got a few of his Toastmasters friends together and he said, why don't we join, why don't we form an association of professional speakers? And then we can help other people become professional speakers too. Now what do you think his colleague said? Crazy. crazy. His, 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 his fellow Toastmasters said, 
Why would we want to do that? We would be killing ourselves. Because we would, would, why would we want to help our competition? So Cabot Roberts said, why should we worry about anyone else stealing a piece of our pie? Because that's what his colleagues had said, that they would, we, we help other people and they will steal a piece of our pie. Cabot said, no. Let's not worry about anybody stealing a piece of our pie. Let's just Make a bigger pie. build a bigger <laughs> pie. And that's what happened. Cabot got a lot of people on board. And eventually, in 1973, Cabot Robert was the founding president of the National Speakers Association of America. Of course, things take time. But it did it, and his passion was rewarded. And over the next decade, several other, three other associations followed suit. As you can see, we've got the Australian Association, we've got the Canadian Association, and we also have New Zealand. So this, uh, again, things take time. This took a decade to get these four associations. So at this point, along came another leader with a great passion. Who can tell me who this man is? Some of my friends. This is Warren Evans. Warren Evans was the founding president of the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers. And Warren Evans talked to the other people, the other presidents, the other leaders of the, all the four associations, because he had a vision. He wanted to take Cabot Roberts' vision of the expanding pie to the rest of the world. Warren Evans talked to the other leaders from all these four associations and said, why don't we build an international federation for professional speakers? And then we can help people all over the world. What do you think the other leaders said? Crazy. Not this time. <laughs> Not this time they didn't say we're crazy. They were definitely on board this idea. But of course it takes time. And it did take some time. But you know what? It happened. In 1997, the International Federation for Professional Speakers was formed. Of course, International Federation for Professional Speakers is a little bit of a mouthful. And it didn't work very well with the advent of the internet. So the name was changed to the Global Speakers Federation. So here is the audience participation section. I would like to know, who can tell me how many members are there of the Global Speakers Federation? Give me a number, shout it out, anybody. 70? 15 or 70. Sorry? 3,000. 3,000? 50? 16? 1 million, I love your... <laughs> <laughs> 10 or 11. 10 or 11. <laughs> no. Yes. No. You're all wrong. Let me explain. Raise your hand if you're a member of PSA SA, please. Okay. You are all members of the Professional Speakers Association of Southern Africa. You are a member of PSA SA. Andy, what are you a member of? PSA UK. You're a member of PSA UK and Ireland. Gabby, you're a member of? GSA. GSA, the German Speakers Association. <coughs> Individually, you are all members of your association. It's your association <coughs> that is a member of? GSA. The Global Speakers Federation. And in the Global Speakers Federation, there are 15 association Goodness. members. What did you say, 15? Yes, I said 15. I beg your pardon. I get, you get a kiss later. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant when I said 10 million. <laughs> so, as you can see, there are 15 association members. Um, I think 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's right. The recent <laughs> one that joined the association, I get confused was the last one to join was the Philippine Association of Professional Speakers. Um, they just joined in January. And between you and me, don't tell the rest of the world, there may be another association joining us very soon. And that might be a huge one. It might be India. 
because they were all re they're already desperately trying to get things in order. So that would be wonderful. We are growing. We have an association that's gr uh, federation is growing because, of course, global speaking is is gr is growing. There's a great need for professional speakers all over the world. It was my honour to be pre the 21st president. We've been in existence now for over 20 years. And like I said earlier, it's my honour to be the 21st president. And if anybody had told Shirley from Sheffield in 1981 that this would ever happen, I would have fallen over and fainted, love. <laughs> um, but people ask me, Oh, people say to me, I'm going to go back to that slide for a minute, people say, oh, GSF president, got a very nice job, isn't it? You know, they just go around the world speaking at all these conventions, and that's all they do, right? Not right. So I just want to, just want to show you a little glimpse of my year so far. We have a lot of calls like this. So we talked earlier about the virtual sessions. Uh, you probably recognise some people on there. John is on there because John is a member of the Global Speakers Federation Steering Committee. So every two months we have steering committee calls. And of course there are lots of task forces that we have to keep track of and steering, standing committees that are uh, functioning throughout the Federation. So it, we have these standing committee, steering committee calls. But of course we do have some fun. My first convention was the German Speakers Association, and here I am with the NSA president, Brian Walter. We do have some fun, and Brian's always a lot of fun to spend time with. And we eat some strange things in all these different places. Um, and we have lots of selfies. Uh, the next one was the UK, and of course, you get your photograph taken with lots of different strange looks on your face <laughs> all the time. And you're thrown in to do things so very spontaneously. So I've learned a lot more about relaxing and not needing to be so prepared and doing things on the fly sometimes. Um, I walked out of an elevator in Toronto and I was greeted with Sherry Briggs and Anthony, our website guy design, uh, designer. And they were standing outside the elevator with these two flags. Now how special was that? Yeah. You can see the smile on my face. I couldn't stop laughing. You can also see it was very cold. <laughs> um, so there I was in Canada for the CATS convention. But don't forget, in between all these fabulous conventions, there are lots more standing committee calls, steering committee calls, and lots of work to do. But then there's the Canadian convention. And it's always a joy and a huge pleasure to wave the flag for Canada and for Singapore, of course, and here I am again with Brian Walter, the NSA president. And of course we get lots of selfies with gorgeous handsome men around the world and I don't know how Santa Claus got in there somehow. Um, and of course it's always a great time when you get surrounded by bald men because you get to rub their heads. Bald men, just see you later. Um, this is another call, so don't let's forget the work that goes on behind the scenes as well. These are the, uh, the board. This is the board of the Global Speakers Federation. Now, the board of the Global Speakers Federation is made up by one senior leader from each of our associations. So that's 15 people on the board, plus our presidential leadership team. So that person on the board from your association will either be your president or his or her designate. So there's a huge influence there that your association, every association, can influence the decisions made by the Federation. And of course, the highlight of my year so far has been the fact that we held the Global Speakers Summit. It was held in New Zealand. Anybody there? Yay! Yay! It was an amazing event. The Global Speakers Summit is only held every two or three years. And very soon we will be putting out an offer for associations to bid for the next Global Speakers Summit. So you might want to start thinking about that, South Africa. I would love to see it here. And of course, my last trip, uh, my last convention was in Namibia. Ziggy, your members made me so welcome. So it is a huge honor to go to all these places and to visit all these wonderful places. And the safaris, the game drives, as you can see, we went on one in Namibia and the one on the right was just a few days ago, 
Joni was there, John and Pamela were there, and we just had some amazing times. Steph, I have to thank you for making that possible. Um, so Namibia was last week, Johannesburg is this week. Yes, I'm traveling a lot more, I've got to go to France. It's a hard life, I've got to go to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Um, then I get to speak at my own convention in Singapore, so looking forward to that, and Malaysia, and the Philippines, and in July, two days after my birthday, I just thought I'd throw that out there, John, so everybody knows, two days after my birthday, I will hand over the reins of the Global Speakers Federation Presidency to this man. Do you know who he is? This is Elias Canaris from New Zealand, who was hugely influential in helping to organize the Global Speakers Summit. And by the way, one of the great pluses of being president is I get to buy posh frocks. <laughs> that's my poshest frock. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit about the Global Speakers Federation. One of my biggest pleasures so far in Auckland at the Global Speakers Summit was presenting a special annual award. This is, this is an award that the Global Speakers Federation is allowed to give out annually, but very often we don't because there's not an appropriate person to receive it. This year, it was unanimous that the award went to Frederick Harron. Everybody, has anybody heard of him? Member of the PSAN. Thank you, he is a member of five associations. Not just one association, he truly is a global speaker, and he is a member of five of our associations. He's vice president of Singapore Association, so in July he will become president of uh, Singapore Association. So it was my great pleasure to give him the International Ambassador Award. Now you'll notice that for his designations, he is a CSP, Certified Speaking Professional. Raise your hand if you're a Certified Speaking Professional, please. Thank you. <laughs> he is also a Global Speaking Fellow. So let me tell you a little bit more about Global Speaking Fellow. Um, obviously the world is getting smaller um, and there's a huge need for all of us to be able to present to an international audience. I mean, even today, we saw um, a virtual team, people all over the world presenting here while we're sitting here in South Africa. Even without leaving South Africa, I imagine you are speaking to global audiences. Is this correct? Yeah. So it's really important that we become <coughs> more credible and um, experienced speaking to global audiences. And for this reason, the Global Speakers Federation established this designation. It's now called the Global Speaking Fellow. Um, it had another name originally, um, and over the past couple of years, it's been, uh, it's been on hold. Applications have been on hold, while we have been, well, the Global Designation Standing Committee have been reviewing, revising the process, revising the criteria, and also revising the name. But I'm very happy to say that applications are now being received for Global Speaking Fellow. So if you are a CSP, a Certified Speaking Professional, from NSA or from PSA Australia, or if you are a Fellow of PSA UKI, you can apply for the Global Speaking Fellow. So, please do, because we need more of you. What, what this designation does, we don't want to say it's higher than CSP. We don't want to say it's higher than the fellow of the PSA UKI. What the Global Speaking Fellow does, it adds the global competency. Because in order to receive the global competency, the, sorry, the global designation, you have to prove that you have been running for some time a successful business around a number of global areas, regions in the world. And all of that is on the website if you wanted to look at the Global Speakers Federation website. So the reason I'm telling you all this today, apart from to make you aware of things like this, is because 
because now that we have a new name, the Global Speaking Fellow, we have new pins. So some existing Global Speaking Fellows need their new pins, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I would like to ask three special people who are Global Speaking Fellows to please come forward. Paul Dutois, please come forward. Federation and I would love to see some of you on our Facebook and our LinkedIn. If you're not a member of one of our channel our groups yet, please take a look. This this is just a screenshot from our website. So the one that's really very uh, active is this one, the GSF speaker community. It's a Facebook group, it's a closed group. This is where you can get to connect with people all over the world and you can collaborate and make friendships and just learn more about the Global Speakers Federation and our wonderful global community where the GSF is at the... Aww. Take that picture, Maggie, come on. Get that picture. <laughs> the GSF at the heart. Get this properly, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got it, darling? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to speak to you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. <laughs> Thanks so much, Shirley. All right, our next uh, speaker and the last for the uh, afternoon is uh, Andy Preston. Um, Andy travels a great deal between. PSA and, uh, well, sorry, from the UK and Cape Town, a 